Thank you very much, Mr. President, Madam Prime Minister, Mr. Minister, Honourable Members of the European Parliament. There are so many things to which I could react today, but given the hour, I will be very brief. Three points. The first point is, after hearing all this discussion about sovereignty, I maintain that Poland is now more sovereign, more master of its own destiny than in the thousand years before it became member of the European Union. By pooling its sovereignty with other European nations, for the first time in its history, Poland has borders that are no longer disputed by its neighbours. That is true sovereignty, Madam Prime Minister. That is a true achievement of all European nations and Poland in the first place. Secondly, all members of the European Union have signed of their own free will and ratified by the national parliaments European treaties, thus entering into obligations as far as maintaining the rule of law is concerned. Not just that, but even allowing the way you maintain those obligations to be judged by the court in Luxembourg, to be controlled by the Commission in Brussels, to be dis discussed in the European Parliament, even to be challenged by other member states of the European Union. So when there is an issue of the rule of law, there is no hiding behind national sovereignty because you have agreed in the treaty you have signed and ratified that these issues can be discussed at the European level. So that is a fact, Mr. Legutko, who loves facts so much. Let me give you some more facts about the issue at hand. And by the way, Mr. Legutko, you are in full right of having your own opinions, but sadly not of having your own facts. Let me just raise a few issues. We have no objection, Madam Prime Minister, to the principle that the composition of the Constitutional Tribunal should be balanced. We also fully agree that the constitutional law and customs of Poland should be respected. But our concern that remains is that the Constitutional Tribunal has interpreted and applied these laws, yet these judgments are only partially being followed by you. I'm not referring to the judgment you were referring to all the time, which is the one of the 3rd of December, in which the court said the old parliament appointed too many judges. But there's also the judgment of the 9th of December, in which the court invalidated a law of the new parliament because it had cancelled all, all the previous appointments, including those that the previous parliament had been fully entitled to make. Please, in our dialogue that we're going to continue, react to that point. And by the way, if you so cherish the opinion of the Venice Commission, and you've asked for it, I thought you did it, because I suggested it, but apparently not. Why then not wait with the implementation of the laws until the Venice Commission has time to give their opinion? Because now you just went along with it. So the Venice Commission will have to come afterwards. Well, the question remains how Poland will solve these issues. Because only by solving these issues of the composition can the tribunal again fully play its role as a rule of law safeguard. And we also expect clarifications on the other reforms which have been adopted concerning the constitutional tribunal. The rule of law and especially, especially the separation of powers is of concern to all of us. We have learned through painful European history that we need the tripod of democracy, respect for human rights, and respect for the rule of law. Neither one can flourish without the other two. You can never use democracy as an argument against the rule of law, nor can you use democracy as an argument against the respect for human rights. We learned that through painful history, and Poland has always been the greatest victim of that painful history. And now we see a free, proud, independent Poland, not in spite of the European Union, but because of the European Union. And that is why I believe in maintaining a constructive dialogue with the Polish government 
because I believe we can solve these issues in conformity with the rules that all members of the European Union have adhered to. Thank you very much, Mr. President.